Welcome. We will look at Fourier transform in this lesson. First, we want to introduce what Fourier transform is and try to see the relationship between the Fourier series and the Fourier transform. Then we can move on to do some examples. And after that, we will look at the Fourier transform for periodic signals. Actually, Fourier transform is for a periodic signals. Fourier series is for periodic signals as we have seen before. So using the Fourier techniques, we can obtain the frequency domain representation of signals. We use Fourier series for periodic signals and Fourier transform for a periodic signals. Each of these have continuous time and discrete time versions. So in this context, we have continuous time Fourier series, continuous time Fourier transform, discrete time Fourier series, and discrete time Fourier transform. So we want to look at uh, this item today. Alright, so in this part of the course, we will concentrate on how to actually compute the continuous time Fourier series and transform. Later on, when we study linear time invariant systems, we will study the conceptual aspects of the Fourier techniques. In the last lecture, we represented a periodic signal as a linear combination of complex exponentials. So we use Fourier transform to represent a periodic signals. A large class of signals, including all signals with finite energy, can be represented through a linear combination of complex exponentials. Whereas for periodic signals, the complex exponential building blocks are harmonically related. What that means is, uh, for the periodic signals, when we computed the Fourier series, we uh, saw that uh, each signal is composed at the power of j, k, omega naught t's. That means this uh, k omega naught means as k is an integer, uh, the frequencies are integer multiples of omega naught, which is the fundamental frequency. So therefore, the building blocks, that means e to the power of j, k omega naught t's, are harmonically related. For aperiodic signals, uh, they are infinite similarly close in frequency. So therefore, uh, the building block signal that we would use is e to the power of j omega t. So you can think that omega is actually a k omega naught similar to k omega naught, exactly not that, similar to that. So also, in the Fourier series, we had the summation. For xt, but in the Fourier transform, we will have an integral rather than the summation. And we will see this relationship in detail in this lesson. The resulting spectrum of the Fourier coefficients in this representation is called the Fourier transform. The synthesis integral itself, that means constructing a signal xt using the Fourier transform, to represent the signal as a linear combination of or an integral of complex exponentials is called the inverse Fourier transform. So for the Fourier transform, the symbol that we use would be a capital X J omega. So remember this is a big X of the capital X and the argument is J omega. We will see why later on. So now let's uh, develop this Fourier transform representation starting from the Fourier series. So we understood how to obtain the Fourier series representation on the square wave, uh, which is of period t. So you can see uh, period is t and from minus t1 to t, it is 1, otherwise it is 0. So therefore you can represent one period in this fashion. When the modulus of t is less than uh, t1, it is 1, otherwise uh, it is 0. This signal is periodically this signal periodically repeats itself uh, with fundamental period t and fundamental frequency omega naught t equals 2 pi over t. Alright, so this is the expression that we obtained. We will not obtain it right now because we have already done that before. Uh, so the Fourier series coefficients a k s were a 2 sine k omega naught t1 divided by k omega naught t. Now, we plotted this for fixed uh, for a fixed value of t1 and several values of t uh, 
I will show that in the next slide. An alternative way of interpreting equation 1 uh, is as, as, as samples of the envelope function. Uh, this now, uh, what we do is we uh, take this k over there to make uh, this expression independent of uh, t and then uh, we would instead of k omega naught we would write uh, omega and say okay sample at omega equals k omega naught we obtain the same thing with omega uh, thought of as a continuous variable the function 2 sine omega t1 divided by omega represents the envelope of t a k and the coefficients a k are simply equally spaced samples of this envelope for fixed t1 the envelope of t a k is independent of t and uh, that's why we did this uh, multiplication over here okay so these are the fourier series representations that we obtained for uh, several values of capital t in the period uh, 41 81 16 t1 and so on uh, so these uh, you can see are dependent on capital t so here for example the height is high uh, here it's low, here it's lower, and so on. So we will make them independent of uh, capital T. Okay, so this is uh, that representation. Uh, so now you can see uh, the, the axis uh, x axis is omega and y axis is T A K. Uh, so this is the case for T equals 41. Fourier series coefficients and their envelope for periodic square wave for several values of T with T1. Um, fixed uh, t equals 41 is this one and then t equals 81 is this one and then finally t equals 16 t1 is this one uh, the coefficients are regularly spaced samples of the envelope so you can see uh, they are regularly spaced uh, samples actually the spacing between a uh, samples is 2 pi by t omega naught as you know and uh, you can see uh, uh, when capital T increases, yeah, T1 is a constant, you can see the samples become closer and closer to each other. Okay, now we can look at this animation where I keep uh, T1 as a constant, but capital T increases. Uh, so you can see XT has been plotted at top. And you can see as capital T increases, the pulses of the square waveform go far, far away from the, the origin. And when that happens, you can see in the Fourier series representation, you can see the envelope in magenta color and uh, the samples TAK in blue, uh, those samples become closer and closer. So, what do you think that would happen when T becomes much, much larger? Uh, so, these uh, AKs, the Fourier series coefficients will become closer and closer and form a continuum. Okay, now we want to formalize this. As T increases, or equivalently as the fundamental frequency omega naught decreases, uh, the envelope is sampled with a closer and closer spacing. As t becomes arbitrarily large, uh, the original periodic square waveform approaches the rectangular pulse. So only the pulse at zero remains. All that, all the others go far, far away from that. Also, the Fourier series coefficients multiplied by t become more and more closely spaced samples of the envelope. So in some sense, the set of Fourier series coefficients approach the envelope function as t goes to infinity because they become denser and denser. Alright, so let's uh, take uh, uh, this as an example. So you can see the aperiodic waveform pulse xt is aperiodic. And now you can see its periodic version where yeah, we have used the tilde symbol right here. So you can see. Oh, so this uh, this is uh, t, not t one. T. So this is minus t one and t one. Okay. Uh, so now let's write down the Fourier series representation 
of the signal x tilde t is equal to k goes from minus infinity to infinity a k e to the power of j k omega naught t and we know that omega naught is 2 pi over t. So a k actually is 1 over t minus t by 2 to t by t 2. So you can think that this is uh, minus t by 2 and this is t by 2 x tilde t e to the power of minus j k omega naught t dt. As x tilde t approaches x t for modulus of t less than t o t, t o 2 and also as x t is 0 outside this interval, okay, uh, we can write a k as 1 over t minus t by 2 to t t t by 2 x t. So instead of uh, this tilde symbol, we can just consider this signal x t e to the power of minus j k omega naught t dt because it does not matter because we are anyways integrating from minus t by 2 to t by 2. Uh, so this uh, signal would be the same uh, within that interval. And then as uh, t becomes larger and larger, all these things uh, disappear and only this would remain we can write the limits as from minus infinity to infinity. Okay. So defining the envelope xj omega for t a k as uh, this, we define it xj omega equals minus infinity to infinity x t to the power of minus j omega t dt. We have the coefficients a k as samples of this. Uh, so uh, you can see when we uh, put k omega naught here, uh, we get this expression. And of course, uh, combining and expressing x tilde t in terms of x j omega, so we'll express this. Uh, so we have to uh, put this instead of a case. Uh, so 1 over t capital X j k omega naught e to the power of j k omega naught t. Oh, as omega naught uh, is equal to 2 pi over t, uh, we can uh, write uh, this. Uh, t as uh, omega naught divided by 2 pi. So you can see now we have uh, this summation. Uh, okay, so now uh, when we uh, think about this, uh, we have to understand what this means. Uh, so let's look at this diagram. So we, uh, we can see now when you think, think about this, uh, so the height of this envelope function is a x j k omega naught e to the power of j k omega naught t uh, that is this height. Uh, let's consider that this is that function and then uh, we have to when you do the summation we consider from k omega naught to k plus plus 1 omega naught. So what is the area uh, of this uh, rectangle? Uh, that area is this one which is exactly this. Uh, so as t approaches infinity, x tilde t approaches x t and consequently uh, the equation 2 uh, which is this one I have written it over here becomes a representation of x t. So x tilde t becomes x t. Furthermore as omega goes to infinity 0 as t goes to infinity uh, and the right hand side of equation 2 passes to an integral. As omega naught goes to 0, the summation converges to the integral of x j omega e to the power of j omega t. So you can uh, see this. So omega naught becomes extremely small, so we write it in this fashion. So uh, the summation becomes integral and k omega naught becomes uh, omega. Okay. So now you can see. Uh, we have obtained a representation of uh, xt, uh, the aperiodic signal, in terms of the this the spectrum, and the Fourier transform uh, itself uh, is like this, which we did not justify. So this is called the inverse Fourier transform. Xt equals one over two pi minus infinity to infinity x j omega e to the power of j omega d omega. And the Fourier transform or Fourier integral is x j omega equals 
minus infinity to infinity x t to the power of minus j omega t dt. The transform x t omega of an periodic signal x t is referred to as the spectrum of x t. Uh, so if you look at the Fourier series synthesis and analysis equations, uh, they also have a similar form. Uh, this is uh, similar to this and this one is uh, similar to this. Okay. Uh, so um, why do we use uh, j omega? So if you think about the Laplace transform xs, which we would uh, study later, s is actually, actually sigma plus j omega, uh, so which reduces to the Fourier transform when we uh, set sigma equals zero. So that's the reason we uh, use j omega as the variable. Of the okay, so once again to uh, re-establish the relationship between uh, this Fourier uh, transform and AK, assume that the Fourier transform of xt is uh, xj omega, if we construct a periodic signal xt to the t by repeating the aperiodic signal xt with period t, its Fourier series coefficients are AK 1 no t xj omega at omega equals uh, k omega naught. So what we uh, do here is uh, we assume that we are given this and we know its Fourier transform xj omega. From xj omega we want to obtain the AKs of a periodically repeated a version of that extremity. That's what we are doing here. Okay. So then we'll briefly read through the convergence of the Fourier transform. Although we do not study this in detail, assume that we evaluate xj omega according to equation 4 and uh, left hand side here x hat t denote the signal obtained by using x g omega in the previous equation 3. When x hat t is a valid representation of the original signal, when is this uh, a valid representation of the original signal x t? We define the error between uh, x hat t that we uh, find from uh, the synthesis equation and the original signal as uh, e t. If xt has finite energy, that means it is square integrable. You take the modulus, square it and integrate. If it is less than infinity, that means it is integrable. xj omega is finite and when you integrate uh, this array, it becomes zero. So if xt has finite energy, uh, that means this, uh, then all the xt and its Fourier representation x hat t may, hat t may differ significantly at individual values of t there is no energy in their difference which is shown by this and there are Dirichlet conditions also uh, there are alternative conditions sufficient to ensure that x hat t is equal uh, to x t for any t except at discontinuities where it is equal to the average of the values on either side of the discontinuity uh, so first condition x t is x t is absolute integrable so absolute value and integrable xt has finite number of maxima and minima within any finite interval uh, 3 xt has a finite number of discontinuities within any finite interval furthermore each of these discontinuities must be finite so they are for absolute integrable signals that are continuous or that have finite number of discontinuities have a Fourier transform okay thank you